Hey guys, Chili here. Welcome back to C++ Infrastructure. Looking again at our IOC container. I've got a very short, very quick video for you here. We're going to make a little improvement here. And, you know, we're going to play a little bit with some template programming. So, the problem, the thing I don't like about this code here is that there is a lot of copy paste. There's a lot of duplication. The difference between, you know, this function and this function very slight, very small. Uh, and normally what I would do in a case like this is I would create a single function, probably a private function, that these two functions just shim onto. They just call into that one private function and that can reduce the code duplication a lot. Um, now the problem with that is a little trickiness here and that is that this version of the function calls our generator with zero parameters and this one calls it with one parameter and that is going to make things very tr tricky it's going to be a lot trickier to create a single function that can handle both of these cases but we we can do it we have the technology so let's go let's just put a, a couple of sections in here we'll call this functions we'll call this one data Okay, so we need a function that both of these functions will be able to call into. That'll give us a single implementation. By the way, the reason why we hate this copy pasta is because in the future, let's say we fix a bug uh, or we make an improvement, there is a fairly good chance that you will fix it. Let's say you're working with this resolve function here somewhere and you find a bug. Uh, in your code that's calling this and you fix it, there's a very good chance that you'll forget to change this one and the bug will resume and now these two have diverged. Whereas if you have a single implementation, you only have a single source of truth and when you fix it, you will fix it for everyone who is calling into that point. This is why we like to keep our code dry. D-R-Y, do not repeat yourself. Anyways, uh, you're probably aware of that. So we need a single function that these two can call into. It's pretty obviously going to be a template function. We're going to template it. So we'll start with T. And it has to be, we can't use our um, our concepts here because it has to work for both not parameterized and parameterized. So we are no longer selecting an implementation. This is going to be completely generic. Uh, now I'm going to put another one, class G, and that is for the generator type. Now, technically, we could probably work some bullshit where we don't have to pass in class T and we can detect T. We can infer T based on G. But honestly, that's a lot of template work for very little benefit. Let's just explicitly, you know, have both of them in there defined. You have to pass them both in as arguments. Uh, and here is the last part. So we need, we're going to template the thing that gets passed into the generator, the generator arguments. So what is the type of that going to be? Well, it's strange because in one case, the arguments, there will be no arguments. And in the other case, there will be one argument. Uh, and the argument will be of type T IOC params. So this is where, just, a, just ever so slightly tricky, but not really tricky at all. Um, class dot 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 PS for parameters. And there you go. What is this? Well, he, perhaps you're aware of it. It is um, variadic template parameters. Uh, so this allows you to have a specified any number of parameters, a large number, five, six, could be one, but more importantly, could be zero. So in this case, you often use this when you want to be able to specify any number of things. In this case, we don't care about specifying any number. We only care, the only numbers we have are 0 and 1. So this allows us to have parameters that may or may not actually exist. And that is the secret sauce. So this function will return shared pointer t, just like the ones that call into it will. 
and we will call this one resolve. I'll put an underscore in this one for my private member. And it will take in parameters arg. I don't even know why I should put an S here when really it, it can only be one maximum, but whatever. You get the idea. All right. So here is our function. Now it's going to do the stuff in this body. So we probably want to start by just copy pasting this into here. And the rest of it, it kind of like just speaks for itself, right? This actually should be a reference, I suppose. But yeah, so now it's not parameterized generator. It's not just generator. It is the template argument type G which could be either of those options. So we'll just replace that with our G. T stays the same. And our parameters, our parameter, which is either going to be zero of them or one of them, that goes into here. So we go arg. Now this is variadic. This is a parameter pack. So I believe we got to do dot, dot, dot after this, and it'll work. I could be wrong, though. Um, but yeah, I think that basically does it. And then for each of these, so for this one, we're going to call, we're going to return resolve. No, wrong. Resolve the private one. And we will template it on T on our G type, which is going to be in this one because it's parameterized, we need a parameterized generator of T. And we pass it in std move the params. And our this template type parameter argument, I don't know. I'm just, the words are just, there's too many words. This thing will be deduced so we don't have to put it in the uh, the template argument list here and yeah there you go and that's it now we can get rid of all this and we've put that down to a single one-liner and similarly for up here we pass it zero things and we just want a normal generator here and there you go Bob, as they say, is your uncle. Hopefully this compiles, but it might not because, you know, my template foo isn't so, so strong, but it did work. So I'm, I'm happy for that. Let's just run it, make sure everything runs as you would expect. It does seems to be working. And there you have it. There we are able to dry our code out uh, with a little bit of variadic template parameter pack goodness. Now, I don't think it matters in this case because our generator, our parameterized generator, takes its argument in by value. So taking it in by value here, moving it, and then moving it in here should, should be fine. But in general, when you have these template-y things that pass parameters down to other template-y things. Um, you can make it super efficient by using universal references. And then these ones bind to anything, R values, L values, and they const, non-const, and they maintain that. And in that case, what you would do here is you would do std forward to forward those parameters. we got to put the type in here. I don't know why it's not able to... Not able to deduce this, but I'm pretty sure you need to put the type in here. So we std forward those, and then in here we can take this in again by universal reference, and then we can std forward ps, and there you go. That'll make all the template heads happy, I guess. But I don't think it's a big win in our in our situation here. There you go. Same. Same result in the end. So there you have it. And yeah, so there's just a little little short 
uh, thing I wanted to show you guys here. Clean up our code a little bit and uh, just show off a little bit of uh, parameter packing. In the next video, I'll probably show off a little bit of uh, how you could add singletons to this container. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more C++ infrastructure.